So I'll talk a little bit about where the separate supplies come from. So those plexuses will contain fibres that are both sympathetic and parasympathetic. Parasympathetic fibres primarily come from the vagus nerve, so the 10th cranial nerve, and that will come down from the head and it will travel through the thorax. Once it comes to the thorax, it will go along the... Um, or they will kind of meet at the esophagus. And when they come to the esophagus, the right vagus comes posteriorly and forms a posterior vagal trunk, um, and the left vagus comes anteriorly to form the anterior vagal trunk. That's fairly straightforward. And these vagal trunks then go straight into the celiac plexus, and from there go into the other plexuses, or might go on to supply um, certain bits of the abdomen. The second source of parasympathetic supply is the pelvic splanctin nerves. And these are the autonomic fibres that come from S2, S3 and S4. So they're essentially spinal nerves. And then the third source of parasympathetic innervation in the abdomen is the enteric nervous system. And this is the intrinsic nervous system of the, um, of the bowel. So those are the three aspects. Um, and this just kind of shows a bigger view of how the pelvic splanctin nerves come in. It's quite a simplified diagram because it doesn't show the, the plexuses or the ganglia, um, but it just kind of shows where the fibres end up in terms of the, the structures that they supply. And the parasympathetic supply essentially increases gastrointestinal activity, so it increases your digestion, whereas the sympathetic supply um, is more responsible for your fight-or-flight kind of response, and usually when you fight or flight, you don't really want to be going to the bathroom. So that's why it slows down.